Hey, what is going on everybody? I'm Noah from TechnoBuffalo.com and I'm here with uh, what might be my favorite tablet. I know <laughs> some of you are going to be like, what are you talking about? But uh, the little Nook Color, the little the little e-reader that could, is now all grown up and it's a, uh, it's a baby Android tablet for reals. So let's look at Angry Birds, how it runs on this thing. Uh, again, you know, the, the thing that I like the most about this device, kind of the combination of simplicity and form factor, very easy to use one-handed, great for e-reading, uh, and then the bonus of the, the web functionality. I'm the worst Angry Birds player ever, so... You know, and so you've got the multi-touch, and every bird's at least is fairly responsive. Look at that! I'm so bad. I just chucked it over the top. Okay, now I'm just trying to be bad. No, I'm not. I'm really bad. That was, I mean, even for me, that was pathetic. But you can see it works. You know, it's responsive. The gameplay is good. It's going to come down to, you know, how how good are the apps that are being made, um, and are people interested in them on this device on a, you know, smaller, perhaps less uh, specked out, but cheaper device for two hundred and fifty bucks. And now you're starting to see honeycomb tablets, you know, for for under 500, under, four, under 400 even. And so then it comes down to marketing. And, you know, Barnes & Noble has a huge, I mean, they know how to sell stuff. They've been in retail for a long time. They have huge marketing, huge distribution channels. And that's why, you know, I think it was a smart move for them to launch their own app store. I don't know how much, you know, it cost them in terms of money and resources. Uh, a couple little quirks here, you know, with some of these apps to get out of an app, um, you have to do, I have to pause the app and then the button will come back to life and I can keep clicking back till I quit that kind of thing there may be a long press function actually I should try the long press function uh, but you got your email contacts like I said uh, your Nook friends Pandora Sudoku all that kind of stuff you got a music player built in you know all that good stuff I actually didn't quite touch the uh, the touch screen that time it just transmitted from my thumb maybe I was staticky uh, there's also a notifications bar now so uh, before when I had a new email I had a little uh, notification pop up down there when my contacts were reported. A little notification saying, you know, hey, see if these people want to be your friends on uh, Nook Friends. So that was kind of cool. Your apps show up because uh, it was very unobtrusive, which I liked about it. Your apps show up in your most recently uh, viewed stuff. Kind of weird that these apps, you know, because they they don't have proper icons yet. They look a little funny next to their their apps that have proper icons, like Nook Friends, like email, and then the ones that don't. Angry Birds doesn't even have a title, so I think those are little bugs that'll get fixed um, hopefully soon. And then I've got, you know, my new issues of Running Magazine, Running Times, and uh, a new book I haven't read yet. You know, these uh, these latest things that I've looked at. Um, and so you can, you know, you can go back and read the books. And um, they've now updated the reading functionality, the animations. Now, do I have to, maybe I have to set, do I have to turn on animations? I actually didn't check this out before. I checked out the other stuff, but I did not check out, yeah, animate ebook page turns. Go. Okay. Me, I would probably leave this off, but some people want to see this stuff. That's it? That's the animation? Okay, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, let's look at the web browser, because that's also the, the biggest area people have been talking about uh, with Flash support now on the web. So we go to the web, and uh, we're at YouTube. So I can watch videos inline on YouTube. You can see the pinching and zooming works. It's uh, 
you know, not the smoothest ever. It kind of depends on what page you're looking at and that sort of thing. But the video plays in line. And then if I turn the device, play it there as well. And then I can go into... I was able before to get it into full screen mode. How did I do that? Ah, double tap. There you go. So full screen mode on YouTube. And if I clear out of here, I'll press the home key to exit, right? There are little shortcuts they programmed in. The home key exits out. Uh, we'll go back. I was looking at ESPN before, and this is... Um, I also haven't had, I had some weird Wi-Fi connectivity issues before the update where the, the connection would kind of forget my network and then re-remember it and that kind of thing. Haven't had those yet since the update, so that's good. Uh, but if we go to ESPN, go to Sports Center videos, and I was looking at this before, and play. So you have to deal with an ad. So it's you know it's not the fastest in the world, but it loads up and it works. But then you can see the video not optimized for mobile, and so you know that gets into a thing that actually the the browser has mobile and desktop modes, and it's nice the way it presents to you you know the choice up front, uh, and it recommends mobile mode as default. Of course, I put into desktop mode, and you can see you know not optimized for mobile. The video is pretty stuttery, but the audio comes through pretty well. So, there's that, and then I'm going to scroll down, I'm going to go to megadug.com, and real quick check out a couple of Doug's Megadug, a couple of, a couple of Megadug Doug's games, and uh, let's go to Ing Racer. It's a flash game. Let's see how well this works. So I don't know how I can play because I don't have a, a space bar and a uh, yeah. So it's not gonna. I don't, I, there's no way I can play. So let's go back. Let's try a different game. Bowling, I believe I've played on a mobile device before, and it works just fine. Yep. So there you go. You can play, you know, this is a very simple flash game, but <laughs> simple enough for me to roll a spare. Oh, no, that was a nine. Oh. But there you go. It's flash. It's working. Uh, I can zoom in even. Tip, tap to interact. Perfect. Thanks. I don't know how I'm going to tap. Okay. Now. Can I convert this spare? No. All right, but there you go. A quick tour around the Nook Color with the new firmware update from Barnes & Noble. Uh, it's got, you know, everything that I liked about it beforehand, plus now a little bit more with integrated email contacts, uh, a little bit better web browsing, flash support, and uh, those an crazy animated page turns. Uh, and the App Store. Angry Birds, Uno HD, you know, all kinds of stuff. So, I'm psyched about this. Uh, I'm going to be at App Nation this coming Wednesday in San Francisco sitting on a panel with somebody from Barnes & Noble, as well as somebody from Amazon and a couple of developers, I believe. i be interested to uh, talk with them, hear what they have to say, hear how they respond to what I have to say about, you know, all these new app stores coming out. I think it's, it's uh, you know, Android purists might not love it. I don't know how Android purists think, but, uh, but I... Uh, think about it, but I think it's the way of the future, uh, Android turning into these sub-branded things, and I think Barnes & Noble and uh, I think Amazon has a tablet coming, that's, that's my guess, I think they're right on it, I think it's the way to go to leverage this to their own, you know, to their own strengths. Anyway, much, much more on all the tablets 
John got like seven of them in last week while I was uh, on the road. Um, over on Techno Buffalo and all our video outlets and everything else. Till next time, my name is Noah. If you've got questions about the Nook Color, definitely hit me up over on the site or on the Twitter account at Noah Kravitz, and uh, I will tell you what I can about it. We'll see you later.